If you set up a collaborative solution, the communications manager is going to be what ties everything together. So with telepresence, telepresence is going to tie back to communications manager. Communications manager is going to allow us to set up trunking capabilities using SIP standard-based video support. We also have the Cisco telepresence endpoints. They're supported automatically. Call admission control, which becomes very important with video and making sure that that video experience is a good one. Because call admission control says, is there enough bandwidth? If there is, great. If there isn't, what's the alternative? Maybe we don't do video. Maybe we take a different path to support the video, that sort of thing. There's the features themselves, all reliant on communications manager, the dial plan, and then you have the unified computing uh, system itself. So all of this, again, really is the call control central, I call it, of communications manager that everything ties back to. Now integrated with communications manager would be your video solution. And with the video solution, there's a few things we want to be aware of. First of all, the two protocols that are supported, H323 and SIP. SIP is probably going to be the protocol that you choose more often than not, but I don't want to say that H323 is not used, because it is. H323 is a standard that's been out there longer than SIP that has integrated support for video. So depending upon your endpoints and your connectivity, you may be running one or the other or both. Now, with our VCS servers, we have VCS Control, VCS Expressway, and then we have the Expressway, both Core and Edge. That's what the C and the E stands for. Let's talk about the Core and the Edge to begin with. This guy helps us with firewall traversal. To me, this is a big, big topic, I think. Think about this. If I don't have to VPN in to make a phone call to a business, that opens up the world, right? So the way that this core and this edge expressway work is that the core stays, I call it kind of hidden inside the network. The edge may stay in something like a DMZ. The core and the edge send keep alive and they open up some ports between them. And just like a firewall would work, if I send out a request to a web page and that web page comes back to me, the firewall knows, oh, Michelle's port such and such requested this and it's coming back to me. That's how the expressway edge kind of works. It opens up those ports out to the outside world. You now call in via your video capable device and it now brings that into the system back to the person that you're trying to reach. Very generically, very high level explanation of that, but that's what firewall traversal is all about not having to VPN in and having the capabilities to come in through that firewall, through the edge into the core VCS expressway. So that's going to be, I think, uh, a hot topic. I really think that that opens up a lot of video capabilities between businesses. Then you've got session control with your communications manager integration. Again, it's always at the core. It's been supporting these since version 7.1. And with that, you also have the ability to set up call processing for standard-based video endpoints and infrastructure components. So with call control, with Expressway, and with your Expressway core and edge, all of these different deployment options give you the ability to, again, set up that video through the system, I mean, you have to have the core and the edge to punch through a firewall, but through your local area network or through your uh, WAN connections, you can use these control and expressways, tie them back to communications manager, and they're going to give you that support for video.